Welcome everyone. Welcome to Technocraft. This is your course introduction and firewall overview. This course is designed to help you learn the CCNA security firewall topic for both Cisco IOS and Cisco ASA. Each device has different approach to configuring firewall policy and this course will cover both. First you will learn about the ASA and ASAV platforms and you will configure the ASAV for firewall services using the Cisco VARL learning platform. Next you will discover how to use Cisco IOS routers as a zone based firewall platform which is ideal for branch offices. Each module addresses topic found on the CCNA security exam. Now as we make our way through this course we are going to discuss a number of different technologies that led specifically to firewall concepts. And so we are going to introduce you to and teach you about the different types of firewall technologies that we use in our today's environment. Now what's really fun about this particular course is we are going to do this in the context of you being a network engineer that has been hired by a company to be a consultant and so you are a junior consultant and I will be mentoring you through this process. Now we have got a couple of customers and the one that we are going to relate our topic is to a company known as Game On Networks. Now Game On Networks as a headquarters office that we are going to work with we will be examining their network and talking about how they build firewall technologies to prevent against certain attacks. And to help them accomplish certain things like VPN connectivity and such. So we are going to take talk about that in relation to this particular customer. Now we will introduce to this customer and then if you think about it just like if you were to get a job at a company somebody going to mentor you through with the initial customer and then from there you are going to start branching out on your own. So that that's how we are going to work through this course. I'll assume that you have already CCNA level knowledge and that these concepts are just going to be an add-on to the existing knowledge that you already have. Okay, so let's get started with an overview of firewall. And I'm assuming that you already have some type of understanding of what a firewall is because in the CCNA course, we briefly discuss security on devices and a little bit about what the firewall might do. But not a lot of details there. Firewalls are designed well just like if you were to think about a house and a house has a firewall on it. It's to prevent the spread of a fire of those house were in the fact catch on fire. So firewall in a network are kind of doing the same thing. They are creating these zones and these zones give me isolation and what I can do is control traffic between my zones. Now as we move through this course this icon that you see right here this is a firewall and we are going to work with this in our topology that will be our our focal point that firewall right there and the firewall that Cisco sells is called the adaptive security appliance or the ASA. We might hear that refer to as the ASA with firepower services or some people might refer it to as next gen firewall NGFW. That's another common term for it as well. And there is a virtual appliance or these physical appliances for this ASA and they also sell a device called a VSG, a virtual security gateway. Now these devices are firewalls but you know what a router could also act as a firewall. So keep that in mind as we move through this. I'm focusing on the ASA here but it doesn't necessarily have to be an ASA. All right. So this is our ASA right there. It doesn't necessarily have to be that device. It could be a router. The router if it were acting as a firewall, it would be using something like a context based access control or what we call ZB 
AZ. We'll talk a little bit more about that later or what we might be doing is something called a zone based firewall policy. ZBPFW or just ZBEFW. Zone based firewall that's generally how I put it. Okay, so that's kind of an overview of what firewall does. Create zones, give me some isolation. Let's talk about how firewalls are implemented. Requirements of all firewall implementation. It really doesn't matter which of those implementations you choose as your firewall. There are a few requirements that they have to meet. However, first off, they have to be resistant to attacks. So they have to have an operating system that is not riddled that it vulnerabilities. They also have to be the only transit point between network zones. Now, what I am talking about there for there for this to explain, let's take a look at our network topology. This is the game on networks headquarters topology. And in this topology, they have a firewall right here. And that firewall that we have sitting here is a transit point between two different zones. So if you were to imagine if you were kind of draw a line right through the firewall like that. We have the internet on the left hand side. And we have our headquarters network on the right hand side. And there is only two interfaces that separate them. The interface that is connected to the internet, we might call that the outside or outside interface. And then the rest of the network, that stuff on the right hand side, we would call inside. And we have an inside and outside zone and so it is very clear when we look at the look at this with which zone would be trusted the inside network the the inside network the headquarters side is more trusted than the internet side the outside zone and so because of that we are able to control things a little better we are able to make sure that we have a proper security applied and again this is a requirement of firewall that is that is the only transit point between network zones. In our case, the transit point between the inside and the outside of our organization. Now also the configuration of that particular firewall. We are going to have to build that based on the organization security policy. So assume that we are working for a customer. We are a network integrator. We work for a customer. Our customer is Game On Network. We are going to come into Game On Networks and we are going to want to find out what their security policy is for. Example, what kind of internet traffic is allowed into their organization. For example, if they were to have a web server and that web server is running in, the, in their data center which is probably not where you are going to put it. You are going to put it in a DMZ. So here is the web server which is sitting right there. But instead of placing the web server right here, you might want to place it somewhere on a DMZ. like this. Now, usually, like I said, we don't do this. That's not really a good practice to put our public facing type devices on a data center. What we would normally want to do is hanging right off that firewall, we would configure something called a DMZ. Just another interface that has public facing web services and so we could put a web server sitting down there. 
and then we could allow access inbound to that web server without having to allow any connectivity from the outside to the inside. That would probably be a much better way to do things and then that's where we are controlling the traffic that is in and out of the network. But again, that's another requirement. We need to know what the security policy is for the organization so that we can build our configuration to match and then finally we need to understand if the components that we are implementing like a firewall is a part of larger architecture or larger solution. So in this case, are we dealing with just a standalone firewall or we really going to be controlling the fire power service module that is in the device that's part of a larger architecture where we have multiple services modules throughout the network all controlled by a management server see there are some of the requirements that we need to find out ahead of time so that by the time we implement these technologies we are prepared and we can kind of wrap our head around that this customer is looking for okay so I think that you probably up to speed in terms of the requirements and the things that we are going to be asking our customer let's talk through each of different types of firewall implementation now we have a couple of different implementation that we will need to discuss so I want to make sure that you fully understand packet filtering firewalls versus stateful firewall versus proxy server and then we will talk about next generation firewalls like the ASA and what they do for us. So let's go ahead and, and start the first discussion here on packet filtering firewall. Firewall implementations. Now firewalls in and of themselves can be implemented on routers and switches in which case the most basic level of capability is just they are filtering packets and so these would be packets filtering firewalls what do you think what tool in Cisco IOS could be used to filter packets are you thinking access control list if you are then you are correct that's right access control list that's a very simple way of creating a non-stateful firewall now the term non-stateful we will get into that in a little bit so that could be one implementation it's just a router or a switch with an access control list filtering packets another implementation that we might see if a dedicated firewall appliance now the dedicated firewall appliance would be something like a Cisco ASA now Cisco's product line for ASA let's go ahead and take a look at that what we are going to jump out here come to our Chrome browser and we are just going to go www.cisco.com slash go slash ASA if you look at the browser you can see different appliances that are available to us right on the main screen we have some of what we could consider to be the lower end sort of small appliances home office type firewalls and that would be something like the ASA 5506 or the 5506WX and those particular devices there are software running on top of Cisco hardware the software is the ASA code and those also come with what's called firepower services so they have solid state drive in them that run a separate operating system a separate module called firepower services module then we have something down the stack we have 5508 we have 5516 and we have 5516x and we have 5558 also okay so that's just a little bit of high level overview on that hardware called the ASA the adaptive security appliances which is a dedicated firewall appliance now in addition to that other firewalls could be implemented as a very complex system where multiple devices and appliances are all combined together and they are all working in concurrent with one another to provide firewall services so again 
very complex type of setup but the firepower service module which are handled by the firepower management center or FMZ that would be an example of more complex integrated system that's providing firepower or firewall services I should say so let's start by talking about packet filtering firewalls now packet filtering firewalls are what we would call stateless now what does that means what that means is that each packet that passes through the firewall is going to be filtered independent of one another and we are not going to remember the state of any connectivity if you didn't see how the connection might relate to one another there is no tracking of any of that information so each packet is individually controlled when we deal with a stateless packet filtering firewall now in general when we have stateless packet filtering firewall we are going to either permit or deny traffic based on just information that is in the header now going again back to your CCNA days you probably remember that every time we package data to send on a network we encapsulate it each layer of the OSI model adding headers and that header data has different information there that we can look at it and so we can look at our layer 3 header that's going to have our IP address it's also have the protocol information in there and things like a time to leave or TTL we can possibly look at our layer 4 header which includes port information which we might relate that to something like web traffic which would be a TCP traffic on port 80 we also if you are looking at the type of information there might look at the TCP flags so is this an ACK is it a reset what is it we can see all of that with a simple access list and so that's how these are implemented in the form of an access control list and so let's go ahead and take a look at our topology for a second and let's see how an access control list might be used so in our topology we have this host down here in the network and that house might be trying to get out to google.com which is in the internet so the path will be like this so what we could do potentially is on the inside interface of our ASA we could write an access control list that filters inbound traffic and that access control list might say any TCP traffic from 10.10.0.x whatever is that IP address is going out to google.com whatever the IP address of Google is we went to deny that if it is TCP traffic that is going to port 80 now we are going to be very specific in that filter and we are going to filter based on the layer 3 and the layer 4 headers well let's go look at capture in Wireshark on that inside host so this is that PC and on that PC a couple of things that you will notice here is that we have a packet and it's a hypertext transfer protocol this is HTTP traffic and this is it's getting some information maybe cisco.com maybe google.com whatever the course may be so if you are writing an access list we can come into this portion of the header this is the IP layer our layer 3 header if you just expand that there are different values in here that we can look for so here is the TTA value we can filter on that with an access list here is the protocol the protocol is protocol number 6 and the protocol number identifies TCP traffic so we could filter on that we could look look for source which which his address is 10.10.0.10 we could also look at the destination 198.41.215.185 and we could filter based on that that's all the values the that are in the layer 3 header but we can also go deeper we can go into the TCP header so that's layer 4 so here in the layer 4 header we can look for the source port which right here is 50767 
we can look for the destination port which is port 80 again it's a web traffic and then in addition to that we could look for the flags so here are the different flags that could be set so right now the ag bit is set so it's an acknowledgement and we also have the push bit set and so it's push and ag and so these are the things that we can filter on as well we could be looking for things like the sin bit or the fin bit to be logged but these again are values that are inside the layer 3 and layer 4 header that we are able to match in an access control list and remember those access control list those are going to be handled packets on at a time independent of one another and they are not going to maintain any state information or relationship between the different packets as to being part of a connection they don't do that it's stateless stateful firewall now stateful firewalls on the other hand are going to track a lot more information about the packet that are passing through them and so by doing this they are able to control the session now that information is going to be stored in what's called a state table and our cisco asa maintain one of these and our cisco routers that are running zone based firewall or zbag the older version of that they are going to keep a state table as well so both the asa and ios device has these tables okay so now decisions as far as traffic passing through are going to be based on the information that is in the state table so we could look at it like this when a packet leaves my network generally that's allowed we are going to allow someone to connect to connect out the internet now as the traffic leaves we are going to go ahead and add that information in the state table now return traffic that part of that session it should be allowed back in without being dropped and so usually that is what happens now we can have additional two rules that are going to take a look deeper into the packet looking at the application make sure that there is nothing malicious in there that type of stuff but again usually if traffic is allowed to leave then we want to receive return traffic so the state table would allow that happen now we can still implement access control list that is not a problem the access control list is going to decide as traffic comes into the interface is it allowed or not now if it is allowed if the traffic gets permitted then an entry would be created in the state table now if the traffic is not allowed then it will get denied it will never make it to the asa stateful table or the firewall stateful table and then we don't have to worry about tracking traffic that is really not allowed now access control list are going to give me some control over unsolicited traffic that comes in perhaps from the outside that's the most common place that we see this and so I'll give you an example here in just a second that will show you the kind of uh, how this works and then also we are going to have to be able to adjust the certain protocol that switch channels during the stream and ftp is an example of that so let's look at an example and see what this might look like let's just assume that we are using ftp traffic and so if we go back here to our game on network topology let's just say that there is an ftp server on the internet and my inside host my inside host want to get to the ftp server here so he hands he sends some traffic and he's going to pick this dynamic source port and let's just say that is 65 207 that's his source port and the destination port for ftp uh, it's uh, 21 and so that's going to be our destination port so the packets comes up to the firewall destined for tcp port 21 on the ftp server out there on the internet and it's going to hit the inside interface of the asa now at this point what we are going to look for is an access list 
the access list just determines if FTP traffic is something that I am allowing my internal people to send out of my organization. Nowadays, we might want to think twice about that because FTP is clear text and people could see certain commands that we are doing and things like that. So we want to use the secure FTP or something that is encrypted. But let's just say that is allowed. So we would have an access list here on the inside interface in the inbound direction so so in the direction that the data is traveling that says to go ahead and permit FTP so now what we will do is we will create a state table entry and so that state table on the ASA is going to have a couple of different things in there it's going to have the source IP the source port the destination IP and the destination port so he is going to pull out all the information into the state table. He is going to say this is sync. He is going to put additional information in there. He is going to know all about this connection. And then he is going to forward that traffic on out of the internet. And it will hit the server. Now, the server is going to send reply back. Remember with the TCP trap, we have three-way handshake. And we do a TCP SYN. And then we do a SYNAC. And so after that three-way handshake, then we can go ahead and send our traffic so that three-way handshake has to happen. Well, this is the scene that went out. So there is going to be a SYNAC that comes back. Now this return traffic, it makes sense to us that we would want to allow it because if we don't allow it, then the three-way handshake never completes. And that host down there is saying, well, I tried to talk to somebody and nobody replied. So that's not a good thing. So we want to allow that. So what the ASA does or what the firewall does, any stateful firewall will do this. ASA or Cisco router, it looks in its state table, which on the ASA, we would call it a connection table. And it looks to see if the return traffic is mirroring a connection it already has. And if it does, then it allows that traffic back in. So this traffic would be allowed. And then the host would send the ag back. Part of that three-way part of that three-way handshake. And now we got an established connection. So if we were going to our firewall and we were to take a look at this FTP, F <coughs> FTP connection that we have now have, then we can see that it is an established connection. And everybody is happy about but now is where the real work happens because once you establish an FTP connection to the server you are going to want to do things like pull data down or put data up onto the server so let's say that we are going to pull data down so we look at the listening of it of the directory and then we do a get for a specific file and we want to get these files but what happen is when we tell when our host tells the FTP server that it's want to receive the file, it tells the FTP server to send it on a different port. And this is what called a standard FTP. So in this connection that we have established, may host now says, hey, I'm going to listen on 65210 for you to send me the file image.bin. I want you to send me that image.bin file which you are trying to download on this specific port. And uh, I'm going to listen on 65210 for that. Now that information is seen by ASA and the ASA has to adjust because what's going to happen is the FTP server is now going to open port 20 and send inbound traffic towards 65210. Well, if the AZ didn't track that, if the firewall didn't track that, then he's going to look and go, no, I don't, I don't have any information that does not match any entry on my state table. So I'm not going to allow it. But instead, what to happen is he has to say, OK, I have got a new entry coming and it's got a different source port and destination port. And it might be the same source IP and destination IP that we are working with before, 
but he is going to create a brand new entry in that state table and by creating a brand new entry he is dynamically adjusted to the change in ports and we can allow that inbound connection without having to write an access list that says that it's allowed or anything like that our stateful devices need to be able to adjust just like that proxy service another type of firewall technology that we see in, uh, in use today is what known as proxy servers now proxy servers see connection in different way or rather end users and the server connection that they're they are making or are proxy through this single device sitting in the middle so if you were to look at a connection it would appear to be coming from the IP address of the proxy server rather than the client and so again that's the whole idea of a proxy server so it proxies those connections now if you are using a proxy server you are going to need to have some specialized coding and this will happen on a per application basis so what happens is that proxy server generally operates all the way up to layer 7 of the OSI model and it will intercept connections and recreate connections from itself and then this gives its ability to look into the granular detail of that application. Now, the proxy server should be transparent to end user. And so you may have to set up proxy server definition in your web browser. To define where the proxy server is or may have other ways if you are using a web security appliance which can act as a proxy server and there is a way to have it automatically provision the clients. There is also protocols that can be used like a web cache control protocol or WCCP that can take traffic and forward it to our proxy server. But in general, our proxy servers are going to need to be defined by our client. Now, what is probably a better idea because proxy servers tend to be a little bit slower than the stateful and stateless packet filters so to just get rid of the proxy servers which generally runs on a software on a machine and campaign that proxy servers technology with the stateful firewall technology and this is where once you have these two things combined now vendors can start to focus on value added features uh, that come from stateful connectivity and the ability to see all the way up to layer 7 so by combining the two of these it gets right of the need for us to worry about other protocols that are in the network other than just web traffic so anything that is going through the firewall can now be filtered and if it is relevant traffic, it can be set up, sent up to the proxy all the way up to the layer 7. Now, this is basically what the ASA does. The ASA, in a way, a proxy server. Our Cisco IOS routers that are running zone-based firewall features are in a way of proxy server. But at the same time, they are also a stateful firewall. And this sort of lead us into a discussion of what we would today would call a next generation firewall or NGFW and the reason that I point this out because really our ASA our Cisco ASA device that are running zone based firewall features that are next generation firewalls that include stateless stateful and proxy server technologies and a whole bunch more so next generation firewall okay so what makes a firewall a next generation firewall well it combines a lot of the ability that we have already discussed in this module the stateful firewall capability the proxy server capability but then it adds a number of other features and this is an example of what next generation firewall would actually entail so first of all 
a next generation firewall would include URL filtering or it watches the HTTP request. Now URL filtering is going to look for my web requests and then make a decision based on some kind of a list. Maybe it's a white list, maybe it's a black list. Maybe it's a list based on the reputation of website. Again, something that Cisco devices are able to do. That's just one feature of next generation firewall. Another feature of these firewalls would be something called the AVC. Application Visibility and Control. Now, this feature is going to give me the ability to look all the way up to the OSA protocol stack into layer 7. And at layer 7, I'm actually looking at application information. And from there, I can go ahead and control the action that happened at layer 7. An example of one of these actions would be a get or put, which would be the functionalities of HTTP doing a get or put. It could be FTP traffic as well. So again, it's give me that layer 7 all the way up to protocol stack visibility. Now, I don't know how to do this for every single application. I want to do this for more common ones and web traffic would be one of these. Also, the next generation firewall would be what we call a context awareness. Context aware means that the firewall itself understands where things are happening. It has a big picture of what's going on in the network. It knows who is connected. It knows what kind of device they are using, whether it's an iPad, or iPhone, or an Android device, or a Windows laptop, or an Apple Macintosh, or a Mac. It knows what these different devices are. It also knows where they are connected in the network. So are they connected to a switch, or are they a guest wireless? It knows the times they are connected. That is the when. It knows the how, wireless, wired, VPN, that kind of things. And from there, using the context, we can have policy that says, okay, if this user at this time with this device try to connect at the location, then we are going to allow or deny it. And so we got a lot of control there. Next one is intrusion prevention system. Next-gen firewalls also going to include some type of element of intrusion prevention. Intrusion prevention is going to do a deep packet inspection. It's going to go all the way into the packet and follow a signature or look for signatures inside that packet. And these are going to be based on the rules that are downloaded and kept up to date in generally Cisco. Now what we can't create our own custom IPS rules, but it's probably better idea to use the rules that Cisco has and then add our own one of a basis when we have what we would call a zero day attack, an attack that just happened today. And so the intrusion prevention gives me that deep packet inspection with the intrusion prevention rules. Next generation firewalls might also use something called advanced malware protection. Now, we know that malware is one of the toughest thing to fight these days and that they constantly are morphing and changing and using these different techniques to get around our security controls. But with advanced malware protection, our next gen firewalls can keep us protected against threats that we see today and also analyze files and compare them against what other people have seen and so that part of Cisco's AMB strategy is that they will create a hash of a file or actually our firewall would take a file that being transferred it would create a hash of it that has that hash would be sent to Cisco not the file initially and then it will compare to see if that hash has been seen by other customers or by Cisco themselves and if the malware and if it's a malware if it is it comes back it tells hey that's malware and block it and usually it's about 20 milliseconds that it takes for this to happen which is relatively quick 
and so by that time that happens we can block a packet in transit that is called advanced malware protection and then finally our next generation firewalls are going to support something called identity based access now identity based access is going to to look at who a user is and then in our access control rules where we would normally write permit TCP from this host to this destination equal to port 80 we can take that a step further and say I want you to permit traffic from the sales group on the sales subnet to the destination or vice versa deny traffic from the sales group so you can actually integrate this with active directory and there's a couple of different elements that would be involved here you would have what's called a CDA and the Cisco discovery agent which is a very virtual appliance that runs and talks using WMA back to Active Directory and it uh, gets your log events and then CDA report back to your ASA about who is authenticated right now and so now the ASA can also take to Active Directory and query for users and groups and so now that as traffic passes through the firewall we have the ability now to look at who is logged in and have a mapping between their IP address which might be 10.10.0.10 have a mapping between that and log events for the user Joe in the sales group and so we can say okay well that's 10.10.0.10 that's Joe in the sales group that's who logged in now I have an access rule that says permits Joe access over to our server and I can implement that rule based on the identity of the user so some really cool features that we have in our next gen firewall and so we work through this we are going to be focusing on a lot of these features and a lot of these capabilities logging all right before we wrap this module out we need to think about logging because logging is really an important element of any security strategy see our firewall especially our ASA they are what I would call a chatty device and what I meant by this is that our firewalls are going to send a whole lot of information to our logging servers and it's really easy to become overwhelmed with the volume here but at the same time we can just turn logging off we need to have this information so my recommendation to you and something that most organization will do is they will use a third party tool to help with the logging and the overhead and they will use something that will help correlate and filter down so that the only see the important message so an example that would be Splunk Splunk is an application that is used to help my me with web logging and correlation and security information and event management SIEM well I know that we have been talking for a little bit here so let's just summarize what we have seen in this module we started out with uh, just a little introduction to what we are going to talk about in this course we talked about how we are going to be focusing on firewall technologies we did a bit of an overview of firewall technologies and talked about how they create zones we talked about different implementations the packet filtering firewalls the proxy server firewalls we talked about having a uh, dedicated firewall appliances versus standalone appliances or versus a virtual machine we talked about some of the requirements that we had for firewall implementation and then we talked about the details of packet filtering firewalls stateful firewalls proxy servers and how those could be combined into a next generation firewall and we also configured logging on our firewall just so we could get an idea uh, so that pretty much does it for now in the next module we are going to get in so in the next module we are going to get in some of the features of Cisco ASA 9.x code 
and we are going to introduce you to the hardware platform as well as the ASAV and again some of the features that are in that code and we will configure some basic management access we'll put some address on our interfaces we'll do this on ASAV so we can see what that looks like and then we are going to learn about security levels which is really important aspects of firewall so I'll see you in the next module